Hey everybody, how you doing? This is First Lady Valerie Hawkins. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my page and to my channel. This is part two, talking about ministers, priests, and flames of fire. This is a long one. Get your pencil, get your piece of paper, and enjoy. I woke up soon one morning. Pillow was wet with tears. I called on my Savior, because I knew that he would heal. He took away my sorrows. And dried up all my tears And that is why I love him so And that is why I love him so And that is why I love him so Cause he's so real to me Praise the Lord, saints of God Praise the Lord, everybody Praise one under the sound of my voice God is good and again, he's worthy to be praised He's worthy, y'all He's worthy to be praised There's a lot going on There's a lot going on here, there, and everywhere But his word declares that his spirit is here, there, and everywhere. So, amen, amen. That lets me know if his word, if the word declares it, and he says it, that his spirit is here, there, and everywhere. We can be on the far corners of the world, and we can call on the name of the Lord. And he will show up and show out on our behalf. But anyway, how are you doing on today, this evening, tonight, or this morning, whenever you see this message or hear this message? God is good. He's worthy to be praised. Get your pencils, get your piece of papers, get whatever you need, because we're going to get into this word, which we are in the book of Joel, book of Joel, um, chapter 2, I believe, 1 through 24, 1 through 25. But the key verse tonight is verse 17, and from there, we're going to go to 2 Chronicles. Yes, Lord. Uh, 2 Chronicles 24. Write that down. And we're going to um, focus on the situation about Jehadiah and Zechariah. And we're going to talk about that because that is pertaining to the minister. Well, not the whole thing, but um, you will see why in conclusion that when the Lord talks about the ministers had to pray between the altar and pray between the porch, it will refer you back to that scripture. And God is good because they are, ministers are so awesome. I mean, they are empowered by by God, you know. And I'm not just talking about ministering, but we have ministered to people and then there's ministries. But there are some people that are called to, to be a minister. In your church, you have elders, you have deacons, you have deaconess, you have prophets, you have bishops, apostles, um, if I leave it out, my pastors, elders. And then you have the ministers. Come on. Come on, somebody. And yes, we all do minister. We all do go out there. And but I am a I am a seer, prophetess. Uh God did not call me. He called me to minister. He called me to open wide my mouth and speak for, you know, because um he's given me a gift to see the past, the present, and the future when it comes to certain things and what he divulges unto me. And um, but I do minister unto people, but that is not my first call. My call is as a seer, prophet, teacher, preacher, so on. But I do minister unto people, but some people that is their specific call, and that's what I want to touch on tonight. Because in this word, he says, Listen, the ministers and the priests, he wants them to well out, he wants them to weep, he wants them. To come before, so we're going to discuss that in this whole. What does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, but before I get into anything else, let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, cover us right now in the mighty name of Jesus from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. We have on the full armor of God on today the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the truth girded around our waist, our feet fitted with the preparation of the gospel. The, uh, our faith, shield of faith to go before us in all that we do and all that we say the word of God which cuts to the marrow and to the bone Father God we come before you one area with clean hands and they were pure heart before you oh God we ask you to come in and word my mouth oh God give me what to say unto your people in the mighty name of Jesus and let them be receptive on that end let them learn let them dig let them seek you oh God 
in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to protect us on the highway, the highways and the byways of this life in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the provisions. We thank you for our life, health, and strength. We thank you for the covering. We thank you for going before us. We thank you for making us whole in you, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, stir us up, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Stir us up, stir us up, stir us up, and wake us up. <laughs> wake us up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. So, um, I've already given you the scriptures. I believe it was Joel uh, 2 and uh, 17, and I believe it was Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles 24, I believe. Yeah, I believe it was Second Chronicles 24. Well, before we get into anything, before we get into that, I, I have to read the scripture to you because I believe that's where I left you off at the other night. Um, and here we go. Um, oh, I got my glasses. Y'all know I need my glasses. I write down so much stuff. I'm trying to tell you, I'm trying to do this. My printer won't act right. My the lights won't act get together, but that's just part of it. But I gotta keep pushing. So, me being me, I left. I think I left out on 17. So I'm gonna go up to um, 15. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify and fast, and call uh, a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, and gather the children. And those who suck the breast, let the bridegroom go forth of his chamber and a bride out of her closet. Verse 17. The, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord. Give not thine heritage to the reproach and that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore, wherefore should they say among the people, Where is thy God? So, First half, first of all, I begin to talk to you about, um, if you've read it, I hope that you did, uh, Joel, a call to alarm, and it went from verses, the first verse all the way down to uh, verse tw uh, 12. And it was a call to alarm because, again, God is saying, listen, Jerusalem, listen, Judah, you're not living right. You, you just, you're just not doing it. And, and I'm kind of tired of it about right about now. And so, therefore... I'm going to send pestilence upon the land. I'm going to send the locust and the palmer worm and the canker worm. And, um, and let me read this. I'm going to send, uh, he's going to send these things unto, unto the Jerusalem, unto Judah, because he is just like, I'm tired. I'm tired of dealing with this. You're doing too much. And this time you have went too far. And so therefore, he let us know that this army that he was going to dispatch is going to be like fire before us. It's just, it's, it's going to come and it's going to be like a flame behind us and behind us, everything would be desolate. They can climb the walls. They walk in unison. They, I'm trying to tell you, they come in like a thief in the night. And from what I was reading, it's like horses, the sound of horses, because it's going to be so many and so mighty in unison coming to pillage, whatever it is that uh, we have or what we think that we have is going to be lost and because my thing was um i was like whoa this is deep i mean how did i get here and that's my let me just share that with you for those of you who didn't see the first video i got here because the, um the lord woke me up and he told me he says valerie and i will restore the years that the locust has eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm my great army which I have sent among you. So I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've heard people preach about it. I've heard it, but I never read it in this entirety. I did read the Bible. I just didn't remember this. I can't remember everything. Come on, y'all, y'all know we get older. So I went back and I did the research and I, and for me, the question I asked, well, what did I do or what happened in my life to cause God to allow this to happen and come eat up everything that I have? Come Put me in such a state that I would be desolate, you know, not only stripped, well, I bring up the term strip, don't have anything, uh, feel like I'm by myself, feel like, you know, what what's going on? What have I done? Because when God gives a word like that, you want to stop everything. You want to go before the Lord. You want to cry out to the God and say, God, everything is going wrong in my life. I don't know what the problem is. Is it them? Is it me? Because a lot of us feel like 
you know, um, from our viewpoint, well, we haven't really did nothing. Well, according to man, no, you haven't really did anything because they do everything under the sun. But according to God, God is calling you to a place, especially those people, you know that you're gifted. You know that God needs you to be in a place. You know you've had a call on your life all your life and you're running every which direction. And God said, I need you to come forth. Now I need you in this season. I need you to get ready. I need you to prepare. And we come bucking and fighting and God begins to strip us of stuff, strip of a people, strip us of maybe people we involved with, old things that we don't need, drugs, alcohol. I mean, he... He lays us on his, on his back until he, he lets something so traumatic happen to us to get our attention. He says, listen, there's a call in your life and I need you to act right. And I'm going to call you. I'm going to set you up. I'm going to set provisions for you. But you are blessed. You are highly favored. I have predestinated you for greatness and you have a work to do. So here... He here in the book of Joel, he's letting these people know. He says, listen, you my chosen folks, but you're going too far. And a lot of us in our lives, we look and say, well, I've been living like this for years. And I always go back over people's environments, how they were raised, who was around them, what language did they learn? How do they speak? How do they act? And a lot of people think that, you know, because it was right in their environment, they're okay. But it doesn't mean that I met so many people in, in my life. They, you know, you meet them, it's nice to meet them, but their habits are different than mine. The way that they think is different than I think. I had to learn, I had to grow. And it's because of the environment in which I was in. But I, you know, and I had to learn that everybody wasn't like me and I was not like everybody. But I had a tendency to feel like I was so sheltered. So I gravitated to the things that was basically kept from me like a lot of us do. And a, and a lot of times, especially when you have a call on your life, you know, you know that you know that mama and daddy is saying, stop, 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 don't do it. But we gravitate to it again anyway. And we don't know as children, we don't know as young men, young men and women, if we haven't been raised in a church, that that's sin. We don't really even know what sin is. We just know a few things that they tell us. But as growing up and teenagers and young adults we begin to say well that's not right lying ain't right manipulating ain't right we learned that in the house you know stealing ain't right you know um lying on somebody ain't right you know and as we get older and go to church and go to sunday school if our minds have evolved then we are able to retain it then we are able to receive it then we are able to live in it but a lot of us we go through life and a lot of our forefathers or our parents you know, some of them was in church, some of them wasn't. Some of them went to church with them, some of them didn't. They left it to other people to take us. That bus would come in the neighborhood, everybody jump on it. But when you get home, life was the same, especially in the ghetto. <laughs> people were just trying to live, you know, people were just trying to get by. So those things was not instilled in us. So not to blame our, our, um, our forefathers or our grandmothers or grandfathers, that's just where they were. Now, where we are, we should know better because they tried to their best to raise us better. So anyway, let me get back to this, but all has to do with this. It all has to do with Jerusalem because God, the father, himself chose these people, Jerusalem and Judah. Those are his chosen people. And he says, listen, I've done too much for you. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have been there for you. I have, I have um, won wars for you. I have won battles for you. I've fed you. I was a pillar of cloud in the day and flame by night. I gave you manna. I, I, you know, I set up a camp for you I, that the, I made you guys something. You guys are supposed to be a light unto the darkness. And now, still, with knowing that um, what could happen to you, you still acting very foolish. But this is the thing. God does not change. God, the Word of God said He changes not. So, therefore, as you go on, as you grow, God might have told you something back in 1982. It still stands today. <laughs> God, he said, I change if not, and he changes not. And the other other scripture says, uh, the other word of God says this. He said, God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. So we know that when God says something, we are to be obedient. And when we do not, when we're not obedient, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and he will deal with us ever so severely. And this is what's happening here. This is the setup here. He said, I'm going to release this army. These, this, this, they, they, they're like horses. They are in unison. They come in to kill, steal, and destroy. 
They come and they eat up everything, the canker worm, the palmer worm. They come because you're not in a place and you know and you know very well that you should be. So that's the setup there. But what got me was before I get to verse 25, and again, I said there are some things that I want to take my time and I want to bring out. So this may be, I might have to do a third part, but this is the second part. And I want you to understand this. I mean, read it, read it up to uh, second, uh, Joel, uh, second chapter, read it up until the 17th. This is where we are. But again, I'm going to read the 17th and then we're going to go over to Chronicles because I'm the type of person. How did we get here? Don't you want to know how you get here? Don't you want to know why things are messed up? Don't you want to know, understand what is the problem or the situation? Don't lean to your left and don't lean to your right, but we're supposed to come to God. The Word of God says, acknowledge me what in all thy ways and I shall direct your path. I need you, God, to direct my path. I need you, God, in the name of Jesus, to come in and show up, up and show it on my behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. I need you. You know, I, re I remember when my mom had died, my dad was murdered. I, I had a lot of deaths back to back and I was going through and I was half in the world. I was half here. I was half there. And I remember a prophet spoke to me and my mother said, my, I didn't know my mother was going to leave so soon. But anyway, she told, kept telling me, go back to the church, go back to the church. But I had an eye in my heart against the church because so much what I had seen. And God, and, and the Lord has spoke to me and said, when you come to me, you, you coming to serve me. You can't serve man. Take your eyes off of man. But look at me, seek me out. And I had to begin to seek the Lord. And as I began to seek the Lord, I tried to just go straight to God. And God said, no, you can't come to me. You got to go through my son. So because I was had so much zeal in me and I wanted him so bad, I, I was like they say, a deer panted after the water brook. So shall so my soul panted after thee. I didn't care what it took to get there. I didn't care how I need to get there. I wanted to get to God. And I did. I found out how to get to him to go to a son. Who's the son? The son of Jesus. Not that I didn't know, but I didn't have a relationship with her. Him. And I had to read, I had a book, it was just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and I established a relationship with him, and through that, and uh, it took me seven days, the Lord put me on a fast, he spoke to me, he said, Valerie, go on a fast for seven days, and I didn't eat or drink, and I went on this fast, and trust me, trust me when I tell you the enemy was doing everything, he was talking to me, he was sending people, people was knocking on the door, I ain't seen people in years. But I stay. I was steadfast and unmovable in the things of God because I wanted to get to God because I need to understand what happened in my life for all this chaos to happen or all these events to take place. So I just want to give you that short testimony. So let's get into it because I want to talk to you about the ministers because, you know, sometimes ministers, they don't know how valuable they are. And I just want to share this with you on today, how valuable you are. You are so valuable unto God and you're so valuable unto the church and I, I praise you on today for your works I praise you on today for accepting the call and again some people we minister uh, we minister unto people but I that's not my first call so I don't want to get you know caught up in that uh, I minister to I'm a minister, but are, is that your call God will tell you what your call is if you ask him He'll say, listen, you're a missionary, you're a deacon, you're a deaconess, this is what you are. You're a pastor, you're an apostle, you're a bishop. And I am a seer and I am a prophet. This is what God told me that I was. You are my seer and you are my prophetess. And, and sometimes I minister, but that's not my first call. But there are people's first call is as a minister. And let me tell you here today, minister, shine in your corner. Let me tell you something. You got something that don't nobody else have. I don't know if it was shared with you. I don't know if you know it. But we first get into the word. And I pray that I'm able to bring it out. I pray that I'm able to bring it into focus. I got a lot of stuff to go through. So again, get your pencil. Get your piece of paper. Stop the video. Um, you know, get whatever you need. Get your snacks. Get your chips. Get whatever you need. And write it down. Amen. Amen. Okay. So. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porches and the altar and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to the reproach, and the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Now, mind you, he called on the priests and he called on the ministers. And he said, Listen, I want you to weep. I want you to cry out. 
Remember these locusts are coming. They're, they're coming upon the land. They're coming to eat up everything that's not like God. He said, I'm bringing them because you guys are hotmess.com and you're not doing what you're supposed to do. They're like noise of chariot troops, mountains. They shall leap the noise of flame and fire, devoureth and stubble as strong people set in battle array. Before they face the people shall see much pain. All face shall be gathered in blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb walls like men of war, and they shall march everyone on its way. They shall not break ranks. Neither shall they thrust one another. They shall walk everyone on its path. And when they fall upon their sword, they shall not be wounded. They shall run to and fro in the city, run upon the wall. They shall climb upon the houses. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. The earth shall quake before them, and the heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall, shall withdraw their shining. Ah, my God. And the Lord shall utter his voice before the army, for his camp is very great and very strong. He that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible, is great and very terrible who can abide in it. So this is what I read last week. This is where we are. But to stop this, to stop this coming upon the land, God turns in, in, in verse 12 and he begins to give us instruction as to what to do to stop this mess. Because he said, this is going to happen out of disobedience. Um, and this is called restoration and call to what repentance. So we had a call to alarm. This is getting ready to happen. Warning comes before destruction. Halting spirit before a fall. Now it's a call to repentance. Therefore also know, say of the Lord, that even, even unto me with all your heart, turn unto me with all of your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. Again, if you are fasting, if you want to fast, go to your doctor and say, Doctor, I want to fast. And he will give him instruction, follow his instruction. And then he turns to the virgin and says, Rend your heart, not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger of great kindness, repentance of evil. Who knoweth if he will return? Now, we start again where God says, who, Is he going to do it? I don't know. But I'm, I'm letting you know you should do it. He says, Who knoweth if he, if he will return to repent? And leave a blessing behind him, even meat off and drink off. Well, we know we're not in the Old Testament. So you yourself as a person, as an individual, the, all, the, your temple is in here. You come before the Lord and you begin to worship him and praise him. But even with this, with the trumpet that is blowing in Zion for us, is sanctified the fast and the call to call the assembly together. Call the people together. Call the bishop. Call the missionaries. Call the deacons. Call the layman. Call the doorkeeper. Call the psalmist. Call everybody. <laughs> Call your mom, your daddy to call. Call everybody into assembly and come together because, hey, a call has went out because um, a call of alarm has went out and a trumpet has blown in Zion and we are not in a place and position in which we should be. So then God says, listen, only thing you got to do is turn back to me. That's all I'm asking you to do. But there's certain requirements that you have to meet. He said, now don't come here acting um, um, funny. Don't come here acting like uh, you just rip your clothes a little bit like sackcloth and ashes is all good. To, oh, God said, that's not good enough for me. I want you. And he specifically says, let the priest. He says, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the, elder, assemble the elders. Gather the children, those who suck breasts, let them bridegroom go forth in his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Verse 17, let the priest and the ministers of the Lord. Weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spread thy people. Now, let me tell you something. I, being me, said, uh, wait a minute, hold on. Uh, the, the priests and the, the, the ministers and the altar, what, what's going on? Who are they? You know, how can they, how can they just come before you and weep? You know, how can they, how, what do they have that, you know, other people don't have? Why is God specifically calling them to stop this um, call to a worm coming upon the land and for them, for the canker worm and the palmer worm um, and the locust not to eat up everything. I mean, who can stop this great worm? Can't nobody stop him but God. But God is saying, I'm telling you how to stop this thing. I'm giving you the remedy. Come on, somebody. I, I'm sitting up here. I'm giving you the antidote. I'm telling you a way out of this thing. I'm telling you that I want you to live and not die in this thing called life. I want you to make it. I'm pissed over here. I'm kind of mad, a little bit upset. But I'm going to tell you how to remedy this problem. 
And that's what happens with a lot of us. We don't know how to remedy the problem. So what do we do? We go back. We start drinking heavy. We start smoking deep. We start messing with people. We ain't got no business. We start going to places we ain't got no business. We try to remedy the problem by not dealing with the problem. Hello, somebody. But thank God for Jesus. Thank God that here he's saying, I want to help you remedy this problem. And I'm going to tell you how to do it. So I begin to read about the ministers and I begin to... So I'm going to be going back and forth. So now what I want you to do is I want you to go over to um, 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles. Oh, oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, let me. Okay. Yeah. I want you to go to 2 Chronicles, the 24th verse. Chapter, chapter 24. Yeah, I want you to go there. So um, before I turn there, I just want to make sure that I'm not um, leaving out anything. And uh, let me just read this what I just read. The blessing will take away the judgment of Judah was restored when they would repent and go back to God. Okay. So anyway, now we're over here. Oh no. I'm not where I should be. Here I go. Here I am. Now let's set this up. Let's set the, this is this is this is cold. I mean, I got it, I get it, and I get a better understanding behind it when I get into um the word of God and you will too. Now, this is a setup here. Um and my my reads and we're in chapter twenty four and it says um the reign of Joash for forty years. Um and it be here it begins to talk about the faithful priest talking about Jehadiah. Jehadiah makes Joash king, he turned king when he was seven years old. But it's really not focused on him being king. Well it, it, after what he did but here in chapter 24 we're talking about Joe died because what happens is is that I'm going to read something that I'm going to tell you a little bit what happens is that he dies he he lived for 130 years and he's been with this king through thick and thin and when the king dies he has a son his son name is Zachariah and when the king dies his son says something to the king, and the king does not like it. And what the king says, he gives a commandment for them to kill him. And so this brings on a turn of events that is like, oh my God. So we want to go down, we want to go to 24, we want to go to verse, start at 15. It says, the death of Jehadiah. It says, Jehadiah waxed old, was full of days, he died in a hundred and 30 years old when he died and was buried in the city of David among the kings because he had done good in Israel both to God and towards his house. Now let me stop right there because I need you to, I want to go to verse 2 and I just want to read this real quick. It says listen, uh, Joash was, verse 1 and 2, Joash was 7 years old when he began to reign. He reigned for 40 years in Jerusalem. His mother name was Zeba and of Bathsheba. Josh, Joash did which was right in the eyesight of the Lord all the days of Jehadiah the priest. That is very important that you understand that. Because when he died, and we go back to 15, so he was wax cold, he died at 130 years old. Now, this is what happened with the king. Um, verse 17, now after the death of Jehadiah, the princes of Judah made an... Um, obeisance to the king the king hearkened unto them and left the house of the lord the god the fathers and served groves and idols and rafts upon judah and jerusalem for their trespasses yet he sent prophets to them to bring them again unto the lord now okay so let me just stop right there so what happened is when Jehadiah died the princes of Judah came to uh, the king, and the, and they was like, "Listen, they came, they paid homage. That's what opposite me. They they laid prostrate in some some Bibles. 
is uh, that word is substituted for that. They lay prostrate before the Lord and they began to say, hey, I mean, not the Lord, I'm sorry, before the king. And they began to say, hey, you know, listen, we, you, 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 Jehadai is, is dead. You got to live like that. You can come over here and get your thug this one. <laughs> Come on over here to Vegas. Come over here. Come over here. We go. Come over here to Rome. We're gonna do it like this. Come over here and come and do it like this. Now that he's gone, you don't have anything to worry about. You can do whatever you want to do. Now I want to stop right there because that's how people be when you are when you are weak, when you're going through something, when you hurt. This man had been with him since he was seven years old. So you know that he was not himself. He was, Jehadiah led him, Jehadiah was like a father unto him, I'm sure as well, it's been seven years old, Jehadiah um, told him, but thus say the Lord, and, and, and the king obeyed, and when Jeho, Josiah, when Je, Je, uh, Jehadiah died, what happened? Here come these people talking out the side of their neck, but the problem is, here in my footnotes, it said he was weak, he was a weakling, he was, he and I, I, I care to look at it as to say that I know when people die in your life that you are not yourself. You know, you are compromised in some type of a way. You can't think clearly. Um, your mind is convoluted. You hurt. I'm sure that he was going through this. And at that time, here come the devils. They came in and they came in to kill and they came in to destroy. To kill, steal, and destroy. They came in... And I know that they came in with a familiar spirit. I was talking to my husband about this. And they came in with a familiar spirit to say, listen, you know, we're we the princes of Ju Judah. We're the princes of Ju uh, uh, Jerusalem. And you ain't got to live like that. He gone. You can do whatever you want to do. <coughs> you ain't never had nothing to drink no more. You ain't never had nothing to smoke. You've been saved all your life. No evil have you done. But, but see... They knew in their heart that that's what, the, that's what, that's what they were saying. We're going to tempt him. We're going to put him in a position where um, the stuff that he ain't never had, we're going to give it to him. We're going to take him around. We're going to take him to places he ain't never been. Because now the priest is dead. Now Jehadiah is gone. Who is there to protect him? And the only thing he had to do was call him, Lord, I have been there myself. I have been there where God is trying to get me to a place. I've been there where people have come in. And they start suggesting things. They start bringing up things. And through your hurt and your pain, you know you can't thinking straight. Your mind is convoluted. You're hurt. And in the Word of God, I, I think it's in uh, it's either Rome, Romans or Hebrews 7, chapter and 4, verse. And it said the devil takes the opportunity. He's waiting. He takes the opportunity out of somebody's hurt, somebody's pain. And basically, he wants to come in and infiltrate that mind and put your mind on something other than God. You know, whether it's drugs, whether it's alcohol, they want to introduce you to things that you've never done before because you have been sheltered and you are a blessed people. And the devil's job is to make you sin, get your name out of the Lamb's Book of Life, get your mind all messed up, keep you in your flesh. They want to feed that flesh. They want to give you alcohol. They want to give you drugs. They want to take you around men. They want to take you around women. They want to... Um, keep your mind they want to stay in your ear they want to spend the night over your house they want to help you with your kids he's like wait a minute hold on hold on hold on hold on and I, I always been your friend i'm your friend but this is how the devil works they work as a tactical unit they come together and they come they don't just come with one i was sharing with my husband that we don't know how many demonic spirits one person have other than what the bible shows us when the man in the catacombs came out and and he and jesus cast those swine unto five thousand herd of pigs but he said who are you he said we are a legion for we are one of many so we know it was five thousand pigs but a legion uh a legionnaire or legions are up to five thousand to twelve thousand um strong in an army and uh let me tell you something about these demonic spirits they don't care about you they don't care if you're hurting they don't care if you're in pain they will use whom they will they use a person full of jealousy a person, a deceitful person, a person that lies, a person that um, manipulates, a person that's full of envy, a person that is sneaky, a person that is, that is uh, full of malice and hatred, a per person that's just driven by in uh, being so envious over something, a person that's just hateful in their hearts, a contrary person, a person that's argumentative, a debateful person, anything to bring you in this flesh, a person that is angry, 
Anything that brings you in your flesh, a demonic spirit will hold on to it. And baby, he got friends. And he will be whoever you want him to be to you at that time. You be by yourself. You don't have to be with nobody. You feel like you're in a room full of people. All the voices and stuff he be trying to say and talk to you and try to stroke you. It's all right. See, they didn't like you. They wasn't your friends. And you begin to hear that stuff. No, they didn't like me. Like, see how she was looking? She was looking at you crazy. See how he was looking at you? He was looking at you crazy. And he wasn't even thinking about you. He might have been sitting up there thinking, well, what am I going to wear to work tomorrow? This lady might have been thinking, well, how am I going to deal with my kids? How, how many, you know... What I got to get from the grocery store. But the enemy will come in and blow it out of proportion because you're in your flesh. You're in, caught up in your emotion. You're going through hurt. You're going through pain. You feel like you're in a desolate place. You feel like you're isolated. He wants to isolate you. Now you isolated. Now he can talk to you all day long, 24-7. And he has friends. And negativity begets negativity. Hatred begets hatred. And meanness begets meanness. And now hurt people hurt people. So now... Here you have Jedediah, who was taught by the man of God since he was seven years old. Now he's a full grown man. He reigned 40 years. And he allowed the princess to come in and speak with him. And I believe, I'm not saying the word of God, but why, how would he receive them? They were princes of Judah. So they were they were kindred. They were what? They, it was a familiar spirit. And we have a tendency, because we have to bring the word of God to us, to let familiarity in. Oh, I did that. Oh, I know him. I know her. And I tell you all the time, listen to me and listen to me by the Holy Ghost with fire. You might have known them back in the Disney. I don't the Disney is yesterday. But you may not know them on today. You may not know the agenda that they have against you. You may not know what spirit is over there, oh, which is which is over them, which is ruling them, which is governing them, which is telling them what to do. You don't know. I might look the same. Uh, but baby, I'm a new creature in Christ. I'm not that. I'm not that woman I used to be years ago. Oh, behold, old things have passed away, and all things have become new in me, in Christ Jesus. And that's just the opposite. When you got somebody out there that's full of envy and full of strife, chaos and calamity, hell fire and everything else, getting up on the wrong side of bed, got an attitude, got a disposition, can't bring around your kids, your family, your wife, your husband, can't bring around your mama, your daddy. You can't bring these people in your house. You got to meet them out somewhere. There's something wrong. There's something wrong with them when you have to hide or keep secrets. And if you have to hide somebody and keep them secrets, you slowly going over to the dark side. Slow walk over there because what's the secret for? You're supposed to be a light into the darkness. You don't have any secrets to hide and don't let nobody put you in that position. A person needs to be upfront and honest with you. So anyway, back to the ministers. So this is what happened and it's cause and effect. So in 18, and the princes of Judah made options, in other words, prostrate. Uh, they came him, acknowledged him, and to the king. And the king hearkened unto them. So he, he listened, he received them, and they left the house of the Lord, of God their fathers, and served groves and idols, and wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for their trespass. So me, being me, I was like, oh, what they do? What? How did they serve them? So this is what I want. You, I'm going to uh, share this with you. Uh, let me get this. Please, 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 Lord. Don't let me leave it. I, I cannot print the paper that I want to print. Something's going on, but that's just how it is. So anyway, I began to look up what it is that they did. And they began to serve um, Asherah. A S H E R A Asherah A S H E R A H and I said, Well, who is that? How did they and it says, Listen, listen who they serve. This was the princes of Judah at this time, led by the king into sin of uh, apostasy. Usually the king led the princes and the people astray. Usually the king do it, but here it was Joash. Such a weakling, he had been taught by uh, by Jehadiah all his life. And when the priest died, he became a victim of the princess who wanted him to leave the house of God and serve groves, ashram in Hebrew, totem pole type of deities, served with all kind of immoralities and idols, Asherah. So I went in and I said, well, who is this? What is 
is I wish I wish my printer was working. I mean, it was working all day long, and you know, as soon as I get ready to teach Bible study or something like that, it doesn't work, but that's just how it is. So we're gonna push past it. I'm gonna do the best that I can and tell you about this deity, tell you how she was recognized, and tell you um all about it. A pillar image of wood was set. And you can put this on, you can Google this and you can see it yourself what these people worship and what they drove King uh, Joash to worship and what caused uh, uh, God to come in and say, listen, it's a call going in Zion. I'm just to kill, steal, and destroy all this mess. So um, a pillar image of wood set up with an image of bow and worship by um, lascivious practices and rites. And she always was a render in the world. They call her the queen. Um, the word come from the root of Asher, A-S-H-R, the straight and up and erect. The pillar was set upright, ground like temple pole. It was either living tree or on top of off the trunk of fashion into a certain shape. A log fashioned into old idols and set in erect ground. Though the unusual made of wood. So let me go down. Original idol was worshipped as a symbol of a tree, but later perverted to mean origin of life. You know, the devil is a lie. And pictured with some male organs of pre procreation, Ezekiel 16 and 17, such, such symbols became an object of imp impure, perverse worship. Crowds of devotees involved in demonized, demonized obscene orgies. They worshiped the sinner in the Canaanite nations and spread it unto other relics of its own found among the heathen people. Relics. The first mention of the idol of the Bible stamps is a special object of the idol, the Bible stamps of God's hatred. It was this idol that God revealed his name as jealous. Ezekiel 34, 13 through 14. First Kings 14, 15. In 15, 15 and 13, 16, 32 to 33, second um, Chronicles 36 and 14. It led to destruction of all the Canaanite nations with other things caused Israel to be banished among the nations, to be banished among other nations. And the true nature of this form of idolatry is made clear. Now listen, God is not having that. And you should see that little thing. That's like me worshiping this. It's like a piece of stick and it's made out to a head of a woman. You'll see it when you look at it. I, my printer's not working. I had it all ready to print out and it just won't work. But let me keep going because I have so much to get through. We have 38 minutes and I'm trying to stop at least when it comes to an hour. But I need you to understand that when the princes came, they came looking one way. They came looking just like him, I'm sure. They came looking one way, but they had another gender in their heart. They came, they were they worshiped deities, they worshiped, um, they was in having orgies and it's full of lasciviousness and full of spite, full of hatred, and full of callous wanting to come in and give this unto him. No, they didn't present it when they came. They didn't present that they, they just came the way that they were. They came dressed as princes, and he recognized them as being a king and said, Come on in, come on in, everybody. And what, when they came in, they had friends. They brought friends with them. And they worshiped other gods. And here this, and here was the one true God, to God. Listen, God said, listen, I don't like her. And I am a jealous God. And I have no other God before me. It said here he revealed it in, in, the, in Deuteronomy 34, 14. That listen, I'm a jealous God. And I'm going to destroy her and anybody that serve her. And here he's letting Judah and Jerusalem know you wrong. And you shouldn't do it. And this is in the book of Joel when he's talking in here in, in the book of Chronicles. He's sharing with, uh, he, we're, we're learning why the wrath was going to come upon them in the book of Joel. Why did God have to say, I'm going to come and replenish what, you know, my army came and, and destroyed and demolished and took away from you. And I wanted to have a good understanding. So I got into the word again and I wanted to understand and you should want to have a good understanding when something is going chaotic in your life, when things are going wrong with your life. What is it, God? What have I done? Am I being punished? Did I let somebody in my house I shouldn't let in? Am I in a relationship I don't need to be in? Am I going to places that I shouldn't go? Am I listening to people that I shouldn't listen to? God, am I not being obedient to? This is when you stop, take control, hold on, wait a minute. 
take self precedence over your life, look and see what's going on and say, what have I done or what am I not doing, God? Because I don't want to feel your wrath. I don't want you to let release no army upon me. I don't want to be in a desolate place. I, if, if, if the people come to me, I don't care who you are. I had to tell somebody which was a family member. I said, listen, let me tell you something. You, I might look the same to you. You take a good look. I might look the same to you, but I'm not the same person. I, person, I have been born again. Behold, old things have passed when all things have become new. And I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I don't think and operate the same. Don't come at me like that. So me being me, I'm just explaining that to you because we have to relate it on today. You need, if things are going wrong with your life, if something is going wrong, sit down, even with your kids, say, listen, what's going on with you? Let's pray about this thing. Let's get, let's set on our foundation. Let's go back and get clarity as to what happened, when it happened. If I did something as your mother, let me repent and make my crooked road straight. If I did something as your father, let me repent and make my crooked road straight. If you did something as a person, as an individual to your sister, your brother, somebody on your job, repent, get it right with God. Go to that person and say, listen, I'm sorry. I was having a bad day, whatever. I didn't mean it. I'm sorry. And I said, it. none of that if, but I did. That's, a, that's another one. I hate that when people are my if. People don't get delivered with that, I don't believe. But you know when you've caused something. And here, he let the wrong people in just by the way that they look and just by the way that they came. And we get caught up in our lives. Oh, my God. And I've done it so many times. Oh, I know that person. Ooh, that's my cousin. That's my friend. That's my partner down the street. Oh, that's my homegirl. And then when they finish doing whatever they're doing with us and getting whatever they want to get from us, they went on with that. They don't call no more. They don't write. <laughs> They didn't want to live their life flying everywhere, having parties and pool parties and everything else. I'm trying to tell y'all here this year. They don't invite you. They don't invite you over their family's house. You don't hear from Thanksgiving, Christmas. You don't get a gift because they don't have a need of you anymore. But they got you out of a place of peace. They got you out of a place of worship. They got you. Come on, somebody. They got you out of a place of happiness. They got you out of a place of joy. They don't know what it took for you to be in that place in the first place. They don't know what it took. It took Jehadiah to come on. It took a man of God in this particular instance. And chapter 24 is what I'm talking about. Who led him? He said, "As long as he lived, he walked with God." So he must have, uh, and he walked with God. So if he walked with God as long as he was living, it takes somebody like that in your life to come in and pull you by your coattail and say, "Hey, hold on, you're doing a little bit too much." Okay, so let's get this thing together. So here, when he leaves, when he dies, the enemy comes in to kill, steal, and destroy, and he will use whom he will when he wants to use them. I'm here to tell you out here in these streets. I already know it. I didn't walk this walk. I didn't been here. And if you don't, are not in a place with God, if you're not focused on the thing, things of God, it, my husband say, come out of the sky. It's a clear day land. If you don't get in a place with God and start seeing men as men as not as trees, you will mess yourself up because days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years. And one day you wake up and you're like, what happened to me? What did I do? I let this person in and he didn't came in like and, and came in like the devil and killed, still destroyed everything. I, my life is different. I don't have a good relationship with my kids. I don't have my job. I don't have my finances. What happened? I'm not even myself. I didn't gain a hundred pounds. My mind been cool, uh, convoluted. Feel like witchcraft is against me. What did they do to me? And here, God is saying, I don't want this to happen to you. This is why he has me teaching you this. Because you need to get a good understanding that these things do happen. P when you go through, when people die or when something happens to you that affects your life, the enemy comes in to kill, steal, and destroy. I don't care whose face he's wearing. You feel me? I'm trying to tell you out here in these streets. You go to God say, God, what do I need to do? You lock it down. Like my auntie mommy said, lock it down. You lock it down. You fast and you pray. You say, I ain't taking no phone calls. I ain't taking no test messages. I got to get with God and find out what's going on in my life. But here, even though he was taught, even though Jeremiah Jared, Jared walked with him, since he was seven years old, that man lived to be 130 years old and died. Working for the Lord and being with him, a guidance, guiding, guiding him in the path of truth and all righteousness. He died and not, and soon as he died, here come the devil. I keep saying it. I'm trying to tell you. Soon as some die out, soon as you go through heart, as soon as you go through pain, as soon as disappointment happened, here come the devil. Knock it, knock it. Let me in, let me in. And you got to say, not today, devil. Uh-uh. Not today. What my shirt say? Not today. <laughs> not today, devil. Not today. But anyway. 
So let's get into this word. We have 45 minutes. I need to get through this because I was going to talk about the ministers. And they left the house of the Lord, their God, the Father, and served the girls in the wrath. So we understand what happened. They begin to serve this, uh, this uh, Asherah, this God. And, and they caused the sin to come upon the land. And yet he sent the prophets to them to bring them again unto the Lord. And they testified against him and not would get here. God sent the, he sent the prophets to them and said, listen, don't do this. Turn back to the Lord. He said, uh-uh, I'm doing whatever I want to do. Mm, it's me. It's my world, okay? It's about me. I'm doing me. And he would not give ear to the prophets. Verse 20. And the spirit, here we go, y'all. And the spirit of God came upon Zechariah, the son of Jehadiah, the priest, which stood above the people and said unto them, Thus saith God, Why transgress ye the commandments of the Lord, that ye could not prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, and, and he has forsaken you. And they conspired against him, and they stoned him with stones, and the commandment of the king, listen, with stones at the commandment of the king in the court of the house of the Lord. Thus Joash the king remember not the kindness of the man and woman of God. Come on now. The kindness of Jehadiah, his father, had done to him, but slew his son. And when he died, he said, the Lord look upon it and require it. He said, God look upon this and require it. So he was stoned between the porch and the altar. Now, let's go back. This is some good reading. Y'all can read on, but it's going to tell you. That God did look upon it. He allowed a small army of Syrians to come or Aramaeans to come because one book says something else. This one says uh, Syrian to come. A small host came in and killed them, destroyed them, okay? Annihilated them. And it wasn't even that many because, he, because of what Jehadiah has said. The Lord look upon it and require it. Lord look upon it and require it. Let me tell you something. That's something to say about your enemy. Let me write that down. Lord look upon it and require it of my enemies come on somebody so now we're going to go back we're going to go back to we're going to go back to joel joel i'm sorry the second chapter and so we come back over here so now we have a better understanding about these ministers and say okay so you mean to tell me hold on let me get this together the priest okay so Jehadiah was a priest. He helped the king when he was seven years old. When he died, he had, well, he had a son. His name was Zechariah. He was also of the priesthood. And he began, the priest began to minister unto the king and said, listen, don't leave God. Don't leave God behind what these other people are saying. Don't leave God because you're going through something right now. Don't leave God because you're hurting in your heart, mind, body, and soul. Don't leave God because things don't look right. Don't leave God because you don't know what to do. Don't leave God because your disposition is off. Don't leave God because it feels like the world is overtaking you. Don't leave God. And the king got upset and said, like basically, how dare you? And he says, listen, he had him stole. He had other people stone him. He commanded them to kill this man of God after he ministered to him, telling him the truth. Now, men and women of God, we get stoned a lot, you know. She don't know that they don't know that they're all in my business. Uh, always saying something. I always got something to say. Uh, uh, I remember as me being a prophetess, I would share some stuff with people. I said, can I share a word with you? They would get mad at me out of billions of people in the world. God wanted me to share a word with, word with them to help them. And they got mad at me. Basically, back then, just you this talk about you, go behind your back. Put you down, men and women, the pastor's fault, the first lady's fault, the bishop's fault, the apostle's fault, the minister's fault, everybody's fault but theirs. But God had me minister to you. I already know. I know. I, I already know what God said. If you knew what God said, then you wouldn't be doing the stuff that you're doing. And if you knew what God said, you wouldn't be doing it because you know what you was going to face. You're going to face an army that's going to come in and tear your tail up. And you're going to be sitting up there in a desolate place with flames before you and fire behind you. <laughs> if you knew then you would do better. He said, ha, ha, uh, uh, 
how you say you love me and I do what I say. God is calling us to be in a place with him. Okay, so now, back here. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare the people. So now we have a good understanding. So now I want to talk to you ministers for a moment. And again, um, you know, ain't nobody but the devil because my, um, my printer is not working. I had this whole thing that I wanted to say to the ministers. But I believe I pray to God. I believe it's Psalms 104 and 4. I believe it is Psalms 104. I wish my husband wasn't here with me. He usually is, but he is not. But 104 and 4 basically says, because I don't have it written down. If I come off of here, oh, wait a minute. Hold on one second. I got it. Just one second. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you guys what just happened. My video just stopped. So I'm doing this. I hope I'm going to be able to attach it onto there. So let's go forth about these ministers. I got to get this out. My printer won't work. My thing just stopped. I'm, just, I'm kind of pissed right about now. So this is what it says. It says, He maketh his angel spirits and his ministers flames of fire. So me being me, I'm like, his ministers flames of fire. So I begin to seek in the Bible, look in the Bible, read in the Bible, say, okay, hold on. Ministers, ministers. I, and his ministers, his ministers. I know, I said, well, God, I know that, um, but he said, specifically, read it again, Valerie. Let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not heritage to the reproach, and the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore, they should say among the people. So let me tell you something, and where, where is the word of their God? In other words, he said, bring the ministers in, bring the priests in, and let them come in because they are so full of the anointed power of the Holy Ghost with fire. He said, my fire dwelleth in my ministers. And I want them to come before the porch in the altar. And I want them, he said, he said, call, remember what he said? He said, call everybody, bring them together, bring the assembly together. Um, let the bridegroom come forth out the chamber, out of her closet. Um, it, cause it's time that the ministers, I want the ministers and the priests to well out and weep before the Lord. This is what is required. This is what God is asking them to do. And I was like, not all these other people. He said, uh, uh, I want them to do it. And it's a certain way I want them to, do. I want them to weep between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare thy, spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy inheritance unto your reproach that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore they should say among the people, where is thy God? In other words, because now, look where we are right now. We cannot afford to, to not obey what God is saying. We got to turn back to God and we got to well out before the God. It's just not a simple prayer. God said, I don't come before me ripping your clothes, render your heart, not your garment. Don't come before me. Turn back to me. Don't come to me asking me nothing. You get before me and you call the ministers and you call the priests and you have them come before me and you have them weep for you guys and you have them mourn for you because they are the only ones that, are, that I have clothed in this particular hour at this particular time. They, they have a job to do and they're going to be the only ones that's going to have a sweet fragrance to go before the Lord. Now, let me tell you something about you ministers. You are equipped. I know you uh, you ministers that have called been called that Pacific office. You have been called to a Pacific office that God himself have anointed you with fire and flames and authority. You can stand in the gap. And this is what he's calling. He said, because I'm just a sin in, a, in an army. I'm just to come in and I'm just to let them know that I'm not playing. I'm just to wipe them out. And God said, the only way that I'm going to do this, is to stop doing this, is if they turn to me um, and do what I told them to do. And if the ministers come weeping, and they come mourn before me. You have, you are, there is something in you that is equipping your heart, soul, body, and mind that you can get into a place with God. And you in that fire begin to turn and dwell upon you and take over you. 
and you have that authority and God begins to speak to you and you start coming up against that spirit of Asherah, you start coming up against the spirit of lasciviousness, hatred and malice, you begin to pray, you begin to intercede and, and God said it touches your heart to the point to you pray until you begin to weep, until you begin to mourn before the Lord and you begin to intercess, you become intercessors before the Lord and for God's people. He said, I'm calling the intercessors to come in. He said, I'm not calling on the weeping women. I'm not calling on the mourning women. I'm calling on the ministers and I want the priests and I want them to come and I want them to intercede. I want intercession for the people and I want you to do what you are supposed to do and do what you are called to do don't look to your left don't look to your right get with me between the porch and the altar and bend to cry out before the Lord for the people listen a call is going out and you've got to answer this call this is a pacific call for the priest a pacific call for the for the ministers now listen I said to you guys before listen there's ministry. We have ministry. I'm a prophet. I'm a seer. I do minister to people. I do have ministry, but uh, that is not my first call. He's talking to these people, his ministers that he had put in the place, like he did the Levitical order, like he did the priest. I want you to come before the altar and I want you to weep and I want you to cry out and I want you to intercede and I want you to take down and I want you to demolish the strongholds break the chains of bondage, come up against a strong man, rebuke him, annihilate him, come up against his cauldron pots, call on the flame and fire of God, look up the scriptures in the name of Jesus, I want you to call on the name of Jesus, I want you to call on my name, I want you to go forth before the people, I want you to come, I want you to weep, I want you to, I want you to wail out, I want you to mourn before the Lord, and then I want you to fight then i want you to intercede i want to know as your god that you are in a place that you are set in your right position in your place in which i have called for you to do ain't no punk in you don't look to the left and don't look to the right go in and start praying Ah, he's already set provisions for you he's already given you the power he's always given you the authority to go in to set the captives free ah he gave you authority to go in ah and break up ah in the name of Jesus that foul demonic ground he gave you authority to bind what else shall be bound on earth should be bound in heaven. What shall be loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. He's giving you the right to go in between the porch and the altar for the saints of God. He's giving you the right. Not, listen, let me tell you something. You are an anointed man. You are an anointed woman of God. You have a call on your life. God has predestinated you. He's predestined you for greatness. Wake up, O oh sleeper. Shake him, O oh God. Rattle him, O oh God. And, and uh, God, go in and, and, and let him know that you God and God all by yourself. Stir him up, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Because it's a time that the ministers have to go forth between the porch and the altar. And they have to cry out, regardless of what it looks like. Regardless of what anyone has to say. Get in your right place. Stop trying. If you a minister, be a minister. I, I, you know, I'm so tired of people want to prophesy and not prophets and, and prophet lie and if you're not a pastor, if you, I know a person right now, he's an evangelist, but he wants to be a pastor. But in this season, that will come. But right now, God needs him to go and tear down, rebuild, and rebuild. If you get into the office in which God has called you to be, you will elevate in that office. You will, ah, blah, 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 shah, eek, blah, 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 ha. Your gifts will make room for you and go before you. But ministers, hear me by the Holy Ghost and that with fire. You are full of flames. God has called you. Psalms 104 and 4, it says here, he says, He maketh his angel spirits and his ministers flames of fire. You read about fire in the Bible. You read about when fire was called down, how it comes to purify. Ooh, how it comes to uh, make sure that stuff is right in its right order. How it comes to make stuff clean and pure. This is you as a minister. This is your job. This is your duty to do in the name of Jesus. You, give, you go to God say, God, am I a minister? If I am, endow me with the flames of fire. Come on, Holy Ghost. I can't get my papers. I'm going off the top of my head with everything that I read. But let me tell you this. Who you are also been called. This goes for everyone. Um, 
I'm excited. This is what I wrote down. And then I'm going to go to what he said about everyone else. Ministers are to have power. Psalms 104 and 4. Hebrews, late tech means to lick blaze, fire, a flash, a flame, a sword. Just like the cherubim guarded the uh, the way to the tree of life. This is how much power and authority that the that the ministers have. Here, God, come on now. I'm telling you about yourself. I want you to know that you somebody. Come on, somebody. That God is not through with you yet. That you are full of fire and flames from on high. Uh, here, of hellfire punishing the wicked. Deuteronomy uh, 32 and 2. He's giving you such a flame and such a fire through your word, through your worship, through your through your uh, mourning, through your weeping, that it will come in and punish the wicked. Uh, bitter anger and battle. You can start mourning out and crying out to the Lord as you intercede, and it will come up against the wicked. Isaiah 42 and 5. Uh, uh, a bitter anger speaking forth through your mouth. Open up your mouth and let God hear you well out and cry out before. Ah, blah, 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 shah. Rattle and shake that cage. Hey, ah, blah, 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 shah. See, I know why the cage bird sings. In the name of Jesus. Because God is setting somebody free. Somebody going to hear. I don't care if it's one person. I want you to get a good understanding of what God is saying to his minister. You flames of fire. I don't know if you've ever been told. He says again. He says again here. He says he maketh his angels, spirits, and his minister flames of fire. You are full of fire. You are full of the anointing. You have power. There's means for you. God has set provisions for you. He has went before you. You are to pray between the altar and the and the uh, and the porch. You are supposed to intercede for the saints of God. When when the devil get ready to come in with all that lasciviousness, that mess, that garbage, you are the uh, on the line one of the first lines of defense to come up against that enemy. Let me finish reading this. It can be seen here. God's ministers being a flame of fire means that they are full of zeal and full of the anointing of the Spirit that nothing can stand before them. The gospel of ministers are to have absolute authority. Gospel ministers are to have absolute authority and power over the works of the devil. Matthew 18 and 18, Mark 16 and 17, Luke 10 and 19 and 24, John 14, 12 through 15, Acts 1 through 4 through 8, 1 Corinthians 4 through 20, and 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 8, and represent God. I say it again, Sam, represent God among men. Come on, come on, Holy Ghost and Neville Fire. And amplified by Christ. You are amplified by anointing power of Christ. The apostles, early believers, um, the word of fire in the New Testament use of Christ is zeal. Um, eating, and zeal eating him up in John 2 and 7. Uh, the high priest Aaron was a minister. Joshua, uh, uh, Aaron was a high priest minister unto Moses and uh uh, Joshua was, uh, and Joshua was also uh, a minister. I'm here to tell you a consuming fire, Hebrews 12 and 29. Again, I want to um, I want to reiterate this. He makes his angels spirits and his ministers flames of fire. Now, let me say this to you because you're going through, you've had a bad time. I've talked to a lot of different ministers. I've I've been around a lot of them. The enemy wants to come in. He wants a whole junk over your head. He wants you to feel because it's who you are. He's got to come back to you. He wants to come back to you in your emotion and your flesh to hold you down, to bind you. But I want you to understand that so a man think of so is he. You start speaking over your life. Psalms 104 and 4. Put it on a piece of paper. Put it on the mirror. Put it by where you sleep. Put it in your wallet. Put it in your purse. Whoever you are. Put it when you drive down the work. I'm a flame of fire. I'm a flame of fire for the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm called to intercede. Well, see, the devil don't want you to know that about yourself. He does not want you to intercede. He does not want you to know this about he wants you to think oh you sow this and you sow that you're not in a place with God he spent all his time getting you out of a place with God whether he used a man whether he used a woman whether he used somebody to lie on whether he set you up whether he sent some familiarity uh 
spirits around you, which look like your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your friend. But the word of God said, forsaking all others and turning unto me. Maybe he sent an old classmate. Maybe he sent somebody on your job to get you to get you to sway, to get you to come out of the will of God. But it ain't too late yet. This is what he's saying to me. You can turn back. This is what he said in the book of Job. Just turn back. Just turn back. What is it in the book of Joel in, in the 12th through 12 through 17? Turn back unto me. That's all you have to do because I have need of you. There's a reason why the enemy came at you. There's a reason why the enemy wanted to kill, steal, and destroy you. There's a reason why the enemy has been on you the way that he has been on you. It's because he does not want you to know who you really are in Christ Jesus because you are full of flame and you are full of fire and you are full of power and you are anointed man and woman of God that God has called in these last and evil days and you got to get in a place you got to fight but all you know how don't look to your left and don't look to your right you got to have that mentality for God I live and for God I die I need to find out what this prophet is saying I need to find out what she said a flame of fire I'm a flame of fire yeah you're a flame of fire and God is calling you to a place to intercede and, and have intercede session on people's on God's behalf for his people. God is saying, listen, my wrath is going to come upon these people if you don't do it. You priests get in the place. You ministers get in the place. This is why the devil comes at you the way that he does. So a man think of so is he. What you think about yourself is important. And what you think about yourself is important. Speak over yourself. Uh, you got to understand where you are, how the enemy is trying to, kind of try to come in and depict you. And God is saying that you are a man and woman of God. The enemy tries to depict you in your brokenness. He kind of tries to pick you when you're oppressed and depressed and angry. He tries to come in. I'm trying to tell you. He tried to come up against your, your principle. He tried to entrap you and seduce you. And this is what happened to Joash. He was seduced. He was entrapped. He, he became in bondage and, and shackles and captivities and fetters. He was subjugated unto these people because he, he began to serve other gods. But he let them in because they were the princes of Judah. And he thought that he could trust him. But let me tell you something. The word of God says, trust no man. I'm trying to tell you. all That's why God tells us, I know you hear it every day. You've been hearing it since you was a kid. Acknowledge me in all thy ways and I shall direct your paths. Let me tell you something. The enemy wants to come and enslave you. He wants to come in and dominate you and influence you. He wants to come in and tantalize you. He wants to come in and sway you and control you. He wants to come in and govern your thoughts, govern your ways, govern your household. If he governs you, he governs your wife. If he governs you, he governs your husband. If he governs you, he governs the church. If he Come on, if he governs you, he governs the Sunday school. If he governs you, he governs the pulpit. If he governs you, who am I talking to out there in the street? If he governs you, He's governing you at your job. He's governing you in your sleep. This is the enemy coming in. He's a taskmaster. He is a chief. He's a burden bearer. He's, op he's an oppressor to come in and put you in a position to play you against yourself. You are the only one that can get your name written out the Lamb's Book of Life. You are a minister. Get up and live and not die in this thing called life. The devil wants to come loot your mind. You need to stand up and say, not today, devil. Not my mind. Then you need to say to God, God let this mind be in me that is also in Christ Jesus. Why? Because I got flames of fire. Come on, somebody. Flames of fire all up in me. Flames of fire in my heart, my mind, my body, my soul. I have the power. I have the right. Right. I have the authority in the mighty name of Jesus. God in the name of Jesus. You go before God in the name of Jesus. God in the name of Jesus. Enough is enough in the name of Jesus. Awaken me in the name of Jesus. God, first I'm going to come to you repenting for everything I might have said, I might have done. I heard what the prophet said. I heard I heard the first lady. I heard value. Whoever you call me, I don't really care. I heard what she said about Psalms 104 and 4. I heard that I'm supposed to be between the porch and the altar, calling on, the, calling and interceding for the saints. God, regard you mean to tell me, regardless of whatever I've done, you still have use for me? Yes, he does. God, you mean to tell me how I live my life badly? You still have use for me? Yes, he does. You mean to tell me I'll be down and depressed? You still have use for me? Yes, he does. You mean to tell me I'm out here on the streets and I ain't got nothing on the highways and byways of life and you still got use for me? Yes. Yes, he does. You mean to tell me I'm back behind chains and bondage and messed up? He still got use of me? Yes, he does. You mean to tell me that I, I didn't come and I didn't do what I was supposed to do? I wasn't obedient and I and I was swayed by the rest of uh, the wayside? You mean to tell me you still got use of me? Yes, he does. I'm here to tell you, only thing he's requiring of you to do today is to come to him. Hold on, let me get my glasses on now. Y'all know I can't see. He's requiring of what he wants you to do. 
He said, listen, therefore also now of the Lord, turn you even to me with all of your heart and with fasting and weeping and with the mourning and rend, and rend your heart and not your garments. Turn to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful. Come on, somebody. And slow to anger and great kindness and repentant of all the evil. This is what he's requiring of you to do because he has a work for you to do. God is not done with you yet. Let me tell you, I done wrote all this stuff. I ain't used half, to half of it. But I'm here to tell you that you are somebody. Now, let me give you some other names that we are also called in the mighty name of Jesus. And it will be a part three. I see that now. Ambassadors unto Christ. We are, all, we are all ministers of the word of God, but some are called to be a minister. This is what God told me. I'll say it again. We are all ministers of the word of God, but some are called in that office to be a minister. This is what the Lord told me. One, ambassadors, uh, besides above, we are also called ambassadors unto Christ. Second Corinthians, angels, elders, 1 Timothy 5 and 7, 1 Peter 5 and 1, fishermen of men, Matthew 4, 19, Mark 1 and 7, laborers, 1 Thessalonians 3 and 2, men of God, Deuteronomy 3 and 33 and 1, 1 Timothy 6 and 1, lights, Matthew 5, lights unto men, uh, Matthew 5 and uh, 14, John 5 and 35, messengers, 2 Corinthians 8 and 23, Malachi 2 and 7, ministers, 2 Corinthians 2 and 6, 6 and 4, Romans 15 and 16, overseers, Acts 2 and, uh, 20 and 28, preachers, Romans 10 and 14, 1 Timothy 2 and 7, servants, Titus 1 and 1, Jude 1, James 1 and 1, soldiers, whoo, come on now, God, Philippians 2 and 25, 2 Timothy uh, 2, 3 and 4, stewards, Titus 1 and 7, 1 Peter 4 and 10, watchmen on the wall, um, Isaiah 62 and 6, Ezekiel 33 and 7, witnesses, great witnesses unto the Lord, Acts 18, 5 and 32, 26 and 16, workers, 2 Corinthians 2 and 6, 6 and 11, and uh, 18, star, we're also called to refer to as stars, Revelation 1, 20 and 21, let me say this unto you today, you ministers, you flames of fire, you anointed men and women of God, come on soldiers, Come on, mount up, warriors. Get it together today because God loves you. God needs you. God wants you. You have a job to do. You are known the flames of fire, just like Aaron was, who was he was a minister and a priest, just like uh, Joshua was, who took the people across when Moses couldn't. He took them over to the land of milk and honey. I'm trying to tell you out here in the street, you are important. You are somebody. God loves you. Um, look up the word of God, get into the word of God, let him continue to anoint you. Um, if you're going to fast to find out, you can find out what I'm telling you. I'm giving you the scriptures to back this thing up because you are important unto God. and You need to know how valued you are and you need to be in your right place, in your right position. You ain't got to try to be like nobody else. You ain't got to try to go and, and run up behind nobody, try to prove yourself. You know what? One thing I learned when I first came to the things of God. They said, if you're going to be a good usher, be the best usher you could be. If you're going to be a doorkeeper, be the best doorkeeper you could be. If you're going to sing, be the best psalmist you can be. If you're going to preach, be the best preacher you're going to be. If you're going to minister, be the best minister you're going to be. If you're going to be a pastor, be the best pastor you're going to be. If you're going to be a bishop, an apostle, be the best that, you, uh, that, that you can be, that God has called you to be. Be endowed with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Come up against the enemy. Intercede for the people of God. Come down, anoint, and pray. And in the sea because somebody out there needs you to get about God's business. Stop worrying about what's going on in your flesh. I'm here to tell you that the enemy comes in to kill, steal, and destroy. Not only that, he wants to try to delay it. He wants to try to get you focused on something else. When God is calling you flames of fire, when God is calling you powerful, when God is calling you anointed, when God is calling you a soldier, when God is calling you a warrior, when God is telling you to mount up, when God is calling you a watchman, when God is saying, ah, blah, 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 in the name of Jesus. When God is telling you to live and not die in this thing called life, when God is giving you truth, when God is giving you concepts and ideas in your mind what to do and how to do in him, get you a book, get you a pencil, get you some paper, get you a tablet, write everything that God tells you to do, write it down. 
The devil is like he wants to come and track you and seduce you. Seducing doesn't always mean just having sex or looking at a man or a woman. But you can be seduced with things. You can be seduced with money. You can be seduced with children. You can be seduced with a man or woman. You can be seduced, I'm trying to tell you, with jewelry. You can be seduced with drugs, alcohol. You can be seduced with wanting to go to Hawaii, wanting to, wanting to travel. You can be seduced in so many different ways. In other words, the devil comes in to manip manipulate so many different things to get you distracted from the things of God. But you said, not today, devil. Not today. I got the word of God. I've been called. I'm an ambassador. I'm a, and the Lord calls me um, a man and woman of God. I'm a light unto darkness. I'm a messenger. I'm a minister. I am a preacher. I'm an overseer. This is who I am. This I'm a steward. I'm a soldier. This is what God called me to do. To be. I'm anointed. I got flames of fire within me that are endowed from heaven down to earth that come before me. And I say, for God I live and for God I die. Today is your day, minister. Mount up. Ho, oh, God, in the mighty name. Oh, wake up, oh sleeper. I hear the Lord said, wake up, wake up, wake up, oh sleeper. You've been down too long. You've been down too long. You've got to get in your place. God needs you to get into your place with him. Him. God needs you to well out and to mourn out anything that's on your heart, mind, body, and soul. He said, whatsoever, uh, um, he said, cast your cares upon me for he cares for you. That means anything that you feel in your heart, mind, body, and soul that's separating you from the love of God. You go before God for yourself. You ain't got to tell everybody. Say, God, listen, I was a wretch undone. I was wrong. I did this. I did that. God, forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. Take this. I repent in the name of Jesus. I'm turning unto you. I'm doing what the prophet said. Tell him I told you to do it. I'm doing what the prophet told me to do. And I want to come because I know I'm the flames of fire. And I need you to stir it up in me, God, so I can get in a place with God. You may be trying to help the men and women of God. You might be trying to do this. But you can't do something and you heavy and you weighed it down. You can't fly and be free and do what you're supposed to do. Flames of fire come down. You're supposed to speak and well out. And well out and say, oh, in the name of Jesus. God, I come here. In the name of Jesus, I intercede for the saints on their behalf and start welling. God, my concerns for the people. Have mercy on me, oh God. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus. God, look on me. Look upon the household. Look upon the saints, oh God. You're supposed to weep, cry out. In the name of Jesus. Come up. Ah, blah, 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 shot, and, ah, blah, 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 shot, and God said it's not going to be like a sweet fragrance before. You mean the ministers are welling. The ministers are crying out with what they did. And he says over in the Old Testament, just what he did to Zechariah, Jehadi's son, he cried out. And he said, look upon it, O Lord. He said, notice it and look upon it, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, I'm telling I'm giving them the word, O God, and they stole me. And then he said, when they stole me, he told God to look upon it. Look what they've done unto me. And God turned around and avenged him. I'm trying to tell you here today, ministers, you go, ah, blah, 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 I feel something. You go before the Lord and you begin to wail out and cry out, not only for yourself, but for the people of God all over the world. And you begin to say, hey, it is me. I'm a minister. I listen to the word and I'm crying out. And I want God, I need you to move. In the name of Jesus, I need you to show up. I need you to show out. Tell me what to do. Give me what to pray for. God, you said in your word what I can't, what I don't say. That murmur and groans in my heart that the Holy Ghost will come before you. God, I want to be a sweet fragrance. I'm in. A, I'm an intercessor. I'm in the seat for the people, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And God will begin to show you and tell you how to pray, what to pray, where to go, who to pray for. In the name, and the fire will consume you. And when you go out, it will rebuke the demonic spirits that are in the spiritual realm, in the atmosphere. And they can't enter in. And they can't stand around nothing that's not like God. Woo, they can't stand around that. They can't stand around that flame that come from, from, from on high. What did he say? He said, I gave my angel spirit and I gave my minister flames of fire. Open wide your mouth. Cry out to the Lord as a minister. Intercede. Repent. Well, hold on. Let me go back. Repent. Turn to God. Intercede. Your life is not over yet. God is not done with you yet. You have much to give. He set provisions for you. As long as you're on this side of contradiction, you have a life to live. God wants you to live and not die. God wants you to excel. He said you are powerful. You have an anointing. In the name of Jesus. And God wants to use you. Not yesterday. Not today. I mean, not, not yesterday, but today. God wants to use you. God wants to put you in a place. God wants to acknowledge you. Only thing you have to do is turn to him and say, Lord, it is me, your minister, standing in the need of prayer. Put me in my right place, oh God. 
get me in the place. You call me to be a minister. I'm proud to be one. I want to do my job. I'm here to do my job. I'm here to obey. I want to be obedient. And I'm turning unto you all that I know how God is good, saints of God. Ooh, I feel good about this thing. I feel good. I said, I don't know how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to do it. But God is good. Don't you know God is good, saints of God? I want to leave you on that. I'll see you. Because we're not done yet. We ain't even got over to, uh, we're still on verse 17. I'll see you in a few days. I'm going to do another one. And it's going to be, um, I guess I'm going to have to do part three, right? God is good and worthy to be praised. They says, God, God, cover him right now in the sound of my voice. Bless them right now. Go before them and encourage them. Ah, blah, 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 shout. Those who minister, your ministers, your prophets, your evangelists, your deacon, your deaconess, your men and women of God, your layman, your doorkeeper, ah, blah, 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 shout. your psalmists, your pastors, your elders, your bishops, ah, blah, 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 shout. your apostles, your prophets. Cover them with the blood, oh God. Cover them with the blood. Give them ears, oh God, to hear what thus saith the Lord. Acknowledge, bring them up high, oh God. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for all things. We thank you for going before us and all of us. In the name of something is the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. I write down everything. Don't hold on, write it down. I'm telling you what to do and how to do it. Follow the instruction. Write down what God is saying to you right now. Write it down because get in your particular, get in your place. Wherever God has called you to be, if you don't know what your place is, you go before God and say, God, who am I unto you? In the mighty name of Jesus. I love you. May God bless you. And may God keep you until next time. First lady out.